Okay, hey, greetings, Honor Scam. There's another video lab entitled Young Mendeleevs in Action. Here's your chance to discover the pattern for density within a group on the periodic table. And we're going to do that by measuring the density of three elements in one group, group 14, and then uh, try to determine the pattern. And then what we'll do is we'll try to figure out the densities of the other elements in that same group um, using the density, the pattern of the densities of the elements that we test. Make sure we have everything assembled that we need. Okay, we need uh, the samples of our elements. We have silicon, we have some pieces of tin, and we have some pieces of lead. We have a graduated cylinder, and we have our electronic balance. Looks like we're ready to go. Looks like we're ready to go. We will, uh, as I follow along through the procedure, you'll have the chance to fill the information out on the data table that you have on the lab. So the first step says to um, examine the elements. Let's look at their appearance. So um, it's not often that you get a chance to see pure silicon. You may see some tin or some lead around, but it's uh, probably rare that you'll see pure silicon. So let's look at its appearance. You can see it's, uh, it's in the metalloid section of the table. Um, so you would not expect it to look necessarily like a metal. You can see that it's kind of shiny and rock-like, kind of brittle. And we have tin. Now you know tin as a metal. See this tin? It's a little, it's in strips, but you can see that it's a lot shinier. It's silver colored. And, oh yeah, it's malleable. There's tin. And finally, we have some lead pieces. Lead, you can see it's a lot dark gray, a dark gray color. Still kind of metallic feeling. And even though it's a little stiffer, um, you can see that it is malleable. So lead. So we've had a chance to look at the appearance of our element. The next step, is to weigh several pieces of each element because of course if we want to figure out the density of something we need to measure its mass and we need to measure its volume so let's do the mass first and as i do each element you'll be able to record the mass let me zero the weigh boat okay let's weigh the silicon pieces first i'm just going to put them all on here And then we'll wait for the scale to settle down, and you can record the mass of the silicon. There it is, 36.17 grams, the mass of silicon. Next, the mass of the tin pieces. We're just going to set all those pieces down in to the weigh boat. Wait for the scale to settle down. Okay, our tin pieces, 54.14 grams, great. Finally, let's weigh out the lead pieces. That's considerable. The lead pieces, 129.35 grams. All right, next we're going to move on to measuring volume by volume displacement. Okay, class, let's get our initial volume. We'll test our silicon, uh, test the volume of the silicon so you know how volume displacement works. You start out with an initial volume, and I have this set up, uh, it may be hard to read, but I have it set up to be exactly 70.0 milliliters. And that'll be our starting volume for all three measurements. I'll make sure that that is our starting volume. So now what I just need to do is add my silicon pieces, and then we'll find the difference in volume. So 
So hopefully you can see I've added my silicon pieces. They're inside my graduated cylinder. So I'm going to try and adjust this into the camera view so that you guys can make a reading. Right. You guys can take, take your own reading, but I get about um, 86.2 milliliters. 86.2 milliliters. All right, let's measure the volume of our tin. And so again, I have it set up to be exactly 70.0 milliliters to start as my initial volume. Try and reduce the glare here a little. I'm going to add the tin pieces and we're going to find the difference in volume. Remember with volume displacement, the only thing that you need to do is make sure that your um, thing that you're measuring the volume of is completely submerged, and it is. And so let's again, let's try to get our volume here. Hopefully you can read it yourself. Maybe I'll give you a hand if you can't read it, but if you can make your own reading, go ahead and take your own. But I have 77.9. 77.9 milliliters for the tin. Finally, let's find the volume of our lead. So again, the initial volume I have set to be exactly 70.0 milliliters. Let me add the lead pieces and then we'll get the change in volume. Okay, as you can see, the lead pieces are in there, and let's see what we can do about the volume. All right. Again, not sure if you can make your own reading, but I'll give you a hand. But if you can make your own reading, go ahead. What I have, I have 82.0 milliliters. 82.0 milliliters for the lead as the final volume. All right, class, uh, that's it for the uh, data collection. And we'll talk a little bit about um, the work up here. Okay, class, I'm back uh, with the scale and my elements here. The next step will be to look up the period number for each of these elements. Because again, we're trying to find a pattern on the periodic table. So you need to be able to place these elements on the periodic table. They are all in group 14, which is also called the carbon group because carbon's at the top. Um, so they're going to be in different periods. So just check your uh, periodic table and then fill in the period number for each element that we tested. Then you'll see the next step is to do a few calculations. You need to find the actual volume of each element, right? Um, by subtracting the, final vol the initial volume from the final volume. And then using the mass and the volume, you're going to calculate the density of each element. We've done this before, so it shouldn't be um, uh, too new. Um, you've all we've done vo a volume displacement lab earlier in the year where you calculated density from mass and the uh, net volume of the material that you're trying to find the density of. Then for the analysis, what you're going to do is you're going to prepare a graph. Again, we're going to look for a pattern. So uh, you're going to be like Mendeleev or Lothar Meyer. You're going to um, look at the pattern. So you're going to um, make a graph of density versus period number. And again, it's always, whenever we say that, it's always Y versus X. So density will be on the Y axis and the period number will be on the X axis. And you'll uh, plot the values that you've calculated from the previous page. Um, this one is not going to be a straight line. It'll be sort of a best fitting kind of curved line that you'll have to draw in um, as best you can. Uh, then the then what you're going to do is you're going to use this graph to then figure out what would be the density of three other elements in group 14 that we did not test. We didn't test carbon, and we didn't test um, fluorovium, and we didn't test germanium. Okay, And those are the other elements that are, in, that are in group 14. And so you'll be able to use the graph to either interpolate or extrapolate those values. Then we're going to see how close we came. You'll calculate the percent error, 
And then, of course, I always have you ask, uh, answer a few questions about um, the lab. But that's pretty much it. So go ahead, get this all uh, written up, and you guys will be good. So hopefully it was a fun uh, lab to watch. I know it's not the same as being in lab, but we're doing what we can with the virus here.